I find nothing more frustrating than when there's a problem with a simple solution and the impacted party doesn't fix the issue. It boggles my mind. Yet that's what many companies do when it comes to some of their more common invoice problems. Not only does not fixing the issue create more work for the accounts payable group, it impacts the organization's bottom line, making the organization less profitable than it could be. That is never a good thing. In this video, we're going to look at three such issues and share the simple solutions any organization can use without spending a red cent. While it is rare that you can completely eliminate a problem in the accounts payable function, we've got one that you can eradicate completely as one of my regular viewers did. Make sure you stick around to, until the end when I share exactly how they did that. Let's start with a persistent problem that seems to plague most organization, approvers who don't review and approve invoices in a timely manner. Now, when we talk about invoice approvals, we're talking about both in an automated world and in a manual world, even though manual today is kind of half automated when we talk about sending out for approvals with emails. Now, if you've bought an invoice automation module that has automated escalations in it, and that is where if the person doesn't get in and approve the invoice within the agreed upon time, let's say five days, the requirement is automatically escalated to their boss. If you think that was the silver bullet that was going to end this problem once and for all, well, you're in my boat, and we unfortunately were both wrong. It has not eliminated the problem, even though I thought, to be honest, that it would take care of it once and for all. So it helps. It might help a little bit, but we're not seeing the golden return, if you will, that I had at least expected from it. So yeah, automated escalations, if you're getting an invoice or accounts payable automation process, definitely have that feature included, but don't count on it to eliminate all your problems because unfortunately it didn't work that way. Okay. So what else can you do? The next thing that you can do, and this is a biggie, I talk a lot of times about education being the cure for certain problems. And when it comes to getting people to approve invoices in a timely manner, this is one of them. So what you want to do is get your cutoff schedule and make sure you share it with everyone who has to approve invoices. So for example, if you do payments, let's say Friday at noon, and in order to be in Friday's payment run, you have to have that invoice by, let's say, noon on Wednesday, whatever it is. But for my example, we're going to say noon on Wednesday. Then publish that and make sure everybody knows that Wednesday noon is the cutoff. Okay, so that's one thing. Some companies also have had some success sending reminder notices. And so if the cutoff, again, using my example, is Wednesday at noon, maybe Wednesday morning at 9 or 10 o'clock, an email blast goes out from the AP manager, either to everyone in the company or everyone who might have an invoice that needs to be paid that says something like, hey, if you have an invoice that needs to be paid, Mary Jane needs to have it by noon today something of that nature. Okay. You may send it to everybody, or you may just send it to people who normally approve invoices. You'll have to determine that. So now I want to talk about some changes that you should make to your standing operating practices, if you will, that will help get approvals a little quicker, or at least we hope they will. You know, all this is by the way, you know, like a plan, each thing helps a little bit. Some might not work in your organization. Some will work in your organization very well. So the first thing that you want to do is what I call get tough on rush payments. If somebody comes down, they have an invoice that has to be paid. They didn't get it in on time and now they want you to do a rush payment. You want to get tough with them. I don't mean automatically saying no, because it's going to make a lot of enemies, but you want to have a conversation with them. You might even say if they're always there, this is the last time that we're going to do this. Some companies also require a third signature, a second signature, and I'm going to talk more about that, so that if you normally have two signatures on an invoice in order to be paid, now you'll need three, okay? So just get tough with rush payments. You might also create or work on a list of what I call your special people, people who are always down there with their rush payment requests, and see about sending them special reminders. If you discover, and this will only be in a few cases, but if you discover some of your employees have adopted the obnoxious practice, if you will, of automatically forwarding your reminders to either their junk mail or to a special folder, you might want to have a talk with them and or their boss 
going to be hard for you to find that out though. Sometimes the special folder, they have these emails put there so that they can go and look at them all at once and get all the approvals done at the same time, which makes a lot of sense except if they never remember to go and look in the folder. So, you know, they may have good intentions with that. Okay, as we get ready to discuss some really ugly or aggressive practices, I'd like to invite you to share how you address this issue. And you can do that by posting a comment in the comment section below. And now let's talk about some super aggressive. And so I'm gonna tell you what these super aggressive or I like to call them ugly practices are. And you'll need to think about whether you want to do this or not, okay? You may not want to do that. And, and I call these a last resort. So number one, when you lose early payment discounts because somebody didn't approve the invoice on time, you might want to calculate what that is and maybe at the end of the month publish that. Now, before you do this, I caution you, I caution you, make sure that the reason that discount was lost was because that person didn't approve it, not because of some screw up in accounts payable. Because the last thing you want to do is put something out there like that. It's going to make them angry. They're going to do some research and you don't want them coming back saying, you know, I returned it. You didn't, whatever. Okay. So make sure along the same lines, another not so nice practice is to report late fees. So if you get charged late fees and you pay them, you might want to calculate them again, report them by offending party. But again, make sure it's them and not you before you do it. I have what I consider the best approach, and this is only going to work in some companies, but you can get some management help on this. If, if, if somebody on your management team, like ideally your CFO, likes and understands the issue and wants to help you stop it. In that case, you can ask him or her if they will agree to you implementing a new practice that requires their signature in order to get the rush payment. So if normally, let's say you have two signatures, whatever you have, they need to go and explain to the CFO and get his or her signature. When they go and ask, then the CFO hopefully will give them a hard time. Why is this delayed? What happened? Why didn't you get it approved on time? And pretty soon, in fact, maybe even before you start, nobody wants to go and ask for this. So all of a sudden you may find better compliance or these rushes that they were asking are not really rushes. So then you, you won't have to deal with that in accounts payable. That you do want to ask about when they need it, because sometimes they think it's a rush payment, but it's not actually a rush payment. Now, let's take a look at an issue that has exploded in recent years, leading to more wasted time and an increase in those dreaded duplicate payments. Suppliers who send multiple copies of the same invoice. The rise of suppliers sending multiple copies of the same invoice has become a top concern for those managing or working in the accounts payable process. Step number one, set the stage. Provide precise instructions on where vendors should send invoices. This might include when you first start the relationship, be it in a welcome letter or a welcome package, or in your annual letter. Now, if you don't do either of these things, consider including a note when you send an email request for the W-9. Try and set them straight right at the beginning, right off the bat, so that there can be no misunderstanding. And when we talk about telling them where to send the invoices and, you know, the centralized location, it should be one email address, one fax number, and one postal address. And that each of these should be very specific. So, for example, with email, you don't want them just sending it to any email. You want them sending it to an email address that's something like accounts payable at ABC company or invoices at ABC company. This way, um, if somebody's out or somebody leaves, you're not docked with a, an issue where invoices are in an email account that you can't get into. And of course, your postal address should be very, very precise. Now, of course, you can also have a portal for your vendors to deliver invoices to you. And we need to mention that. Step number two to getting rid of these horrific duplicate copies of the same invoice. Pay on time. The reason for this is it doesn't give your supplier a legitimate reason for sending a second copy. If they don't get paid by the due date, they are well within their rights to send a second copy of that invoice in an attempt to try and get paid. So don't give them that opportunity. Pay on time. I'm not saying pay early, but I am saying if you've agreed to 30 day terms, pay them in 30 days. Don't decide, well, we'll try and get a few extra days and we'll pay them in 40 or 50 days. Because once you do that, they're going to send that second invoice and that's more work for your staff. 
and that's going to negate some of the savings that you've got from your cash flow enhancement by paying a little bit late. Step number three, identify those vendors who regularly send you more than one copy. And by the way, you might also identify those vendors who not only are they sending you a second copy of that invoice, but they're changing the invoice number because that's going to require some extra checking. And that's another way that a duplicate payment can get made. But anyway, you're going to identify those vendors who are sending more than one copy. And then you contact them and ask them to stop. Some will, and unfortunately, some won't. You can make this first attempt at asking, you know, to only send one copy and telling them exactly where to, to send it by email. And, you know, you'll be successful in some cases, but where you aren't, and it will happen, we have to go to step number four. And that means actually picking up the phone and calling those who persist in sending multiple copies of the same invoice. Now, you're going to ask them politely because, you know, you want them to do what you're going to do. And again, just like before, some will and some won't. Now, to be honest, many of these companies who are sending multiple copies of the invoice, that is their process. So you calling them up and asking them to stop is not going to change anything because that's their process and they're not going to change it just for you. But you still, you want to try. And if they persist, you might tell them that if they're going to continue sending all these extra copies of these invoices, that they're going to go on the list of vendors who require extra verification because you have to protect your organization and you have to make sure that you don't make a duplicate payment. And you might tell them that, you know, going on this list um, could delay their payment. And that, that goes right against what they're trying to achieve by sending those second copies. Step number five repeat step number three and number four. Some vendors who do stop sending the duplicates will resume and that'll practice after a few months and you'll have to get on them again. And then in other cases, you'll have new suppliers who come on board and it will be their process to send multiple copies. So you want, you want to also make sure that you stop them. There are consultants who are now advising their clients to send a second copy of that invoice on the invoice date or a few days before the invoice date. They have some convoluted reasoning that they think this second invoice will remind their customers that the payment is due and will prompt a payment. Now, unfortunately, what this does is create extra work for you. And personally, although I can't prove this, I think that some of these companies who are sending these second copies at this last minute like this are hoping that you'll make a duplicate payment. Before we get to the last issue, the one that you can really eliminate, if you're getting value from this talk, I'd love if you'd hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you're getting value from this talk and I should make more like it. A personal thanks from me to everyone who has done that. And now let's look at one of the few problems that can actually be eliminated. Remember, I'm going to show you how one multinational organization operating in the U.S. achieved that goal. Invoices without a purchase order number. How much time does your accounts payable team waste trying to figure out who approved an order that comes in without a purchase order number or the name of the person who placed the order? What if I told you there was a way to completely eliminate that headache? So this is what typically happens. An invoice comes in, it comes into accounts payable, they need to send it out for approval. Problem is, the invoice does not have a purchase order number on it, nor does it have the name of the person who placed the order. Now, one of two things, it could be fraudulent, but let's assume it's not, or you could have to figure out who approved it. And I can't tell you how many companies I've seen different personnel, and in one case, actually the controller, go around from office to office trying to figure out who ordered this and who should approve it. A complete waste of time, not really a good use of human assets when they are at a premium. So here's what you do. You create a standard form letter, or it can be an email also. I'm going to say letter, but I also mean email when I send this. The wording goes something like this. Dear Mr. Ms. Vanda, in order to get you paid in a timely manner, ABC Company, that's your company's name, requires that every invoice have either a purchase order number on it or the name of the person who placed the order. And then you send it back to them. When they get it back, they'll include that information, return it to you, and you can pay it without having to waste time running around doing this non-value-add test. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, oh, that would never work at our company. I don't think so, Mary. Will this work? I shared this one day in our free e -zine. I shared this tip, and I got a note back from one of my readers. And she said to me, I'm so glad you put this in. She said, this is what happened at our company. They were a Danish company, I believe. And she said, 
the management from Denmark came to the company and told them they were going to do this. And she said, no, 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 that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. And they went back and forth. And she kept saying to them, no, it will not work in the United States. We don't do that in the United States. But they overrode her and they sent it out. And she was so adamantly against this, she said, that they sent the letter out without her signature on it, without her name. Anyway, the letter went out. And she said, three months later, guess what they're not getting? Invoices without invoice numbers or purchase orders. That's right. They got everybody in line in three months. You can do the same. As you can see from the discussion of these three problems, and there are a lot of other issues, a good understanding of invoices and invoice processing is critical if you want to have a successful accounts payable operation. That's why we recently put together a concise compilation of the invoice information you need to achieve that goal. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.